Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tear. Today I'm going to do another number theory video and I'm going to talk about a famous, uh, a famous math problem, kind of a brain teaser. It's called the monkey and the coconuts. Maybe you're familiar with this problem, um, but anyway, I'll just, I'll just read it to you. So you have five sailors that arrived at a desert island um, that has only coconuts and one monkey. Sailors collect all the coconuts into one big pile and agree to divide up the coconuts into equal shares the next morning. However, during the night, each sailor wakes up one at a time, afraid to trust the others, and decides to take his share secretly. So each sailor takes one-fifth of the coconuts and hides it. Each time, there is one coconut left, and the sailor gives that uh, coconut to the monkey. In the morning, they divide uh, what's left of the pile into equal shares, and there's still one coconut left for the monkey. So the question is, how many coconuts were there than the original pile? <laughs> so this is an interesting uh, exercise, and it involves the Diophantine equation. I'll show you how, how it works. So let's uh, here, here's the problem. Here's another picture of the problem. Here's the five sailors. I'm going to call them A, B, C, D, and E. And actually, that's their shares. So, so that's how many coconuts they take in the night. So there's n share. I didn't write down n, but the total number of coconuts that start uh, in in the pile they start with is n. Uh, and then uh, the first uh, the first sailor gets a coconuts uh, in the night. That's his share. He's one for the monkey. And then uh, the next sailor takes b. He's another one for the monkey. The third sailor takes C coconuts, leaves one for the monkey. Fourth takes D, leaves one for the monkey. The fifth takes E, leaves one for the monkey. And then after all that's done, there's still coconuts left from the original N, and they divide that into five uh, equal um, piles and leave one more for the monkey. Uh, I'm going to call the number that's left F. So uh, we can set up a bunch of equations to to uh, represent what's going on. So so since uh, each sailor is taking one-fifth of the total amount of coconuts left, uh, the first sailor, A, he just takes one-fifth of the total. So that's going to be N over 5, but then there's one left, so we have N equals 5, A plus 1. That's our first equation. And then it, it's kind of recursive. So now the number of coconuts that's left after the first sailor does that is 4A, but now um, B, Sailor B takes his share of that, uh, which is going to be 4A over 5, uh, 4 a minus 1 over 5. So we have the same kind of thing, 4A equals 5B plus 1, so on. 4B equals 5C plus 1, 4C equals 5D plus 1, 4D equals 5E plus 1. Um, finally, don't forget that in the next morning, uh, each Sailor takes F coconut. So we have to do this one, one more time, the sixth time. So 4 equals 5f plus 1. Those are the equations we get. And all these numbers have to be integers. Um, so now we can we can kind of do backtracking here, which is done here. Um, so you can you can write expression for n in terms of all, uh, f. I mean, we really don't care about a, b, c, d, and e. We can substitute, back substitute for them, which is what's done here. You get a very ugly expression at the end. But you can simplify that expression, which I did here. So when you do this, you're going to get, um, you can multiply the whole thing by 4 to the 5th power because notice there's five uh, factors of 4 in the denominator. If you put everything over a common denominator, you get 4 to the 5th power. So you can, you can clear the denominator by multiplying everything by 4 to the 5th, which I've done here. And you can check for yourself when you when you take care of all the parentheses, you get this kind of ugly expression. So four to the fifth n is equal to five to the fifth f plus this ugly quantity five to the fifth plus four times five to the fourth plus four squared times five cubed, so on up to four to the fifth. And there's a you can actually use the uh, ge finite geometric series formula to simplify this. Um, these numbers on top. It's just 5 to the 6 minus 4 to the 6 over 5 minus 4, but 5 minus 4 is 1. So you're going to get 5 to the 5th, you're going to get 4 to the 5th n equals 5 to the 5th f plus 5 to the 6 minus 4 to the 6. Well, now we can do something clever. We can use modular arithmetic. So um, notice that if we, if we don't care about these factors of 
five to the fifth. If we only care about the remainder uh, after we divide by five to the fifth, so you get four to the fifth n is congruent to four to the sixth, minus four to the sixth. That's this last factor. That's the only one that's not divisible by five to the fifth. So you get four to the fifth n is congruent to minus four to the sixth modulo five to the sixth. But now notice that both the left and right sides are divisible by four to the fifth. So we can divide by that because four to the fifth is um, relatively prime to five to the fifth. When we do that, we get n is congruent to minus four modulo five to the fifth. And what that really means is that n is a multiple of five to the fifth, an integer multiple of five to the fifth minus four. That's the general solution. I put in this box here. So the general solution is n equals 5 to the 5th k minus 4, where k is some positive integer. It could be any positive integer. Smallest solution we get is going to be the solution we get when we plug in k equals 1. So when we plug in k equals 1, we just get um, 5 to the 5th minus 4, um, which we're set to be 15,621. That's the smallest possible number of coconuts we could have started with to get this solution. Seems like a lot of coconuts, but we're doing a lot of modular arithmetic here. I mean, it's kind of unusual you're going to have one remainder one six times, so that's probably why this number is so big. But anyway, I think it's an interesting problem, and it involves a little bit of modular arithmetic. So that's just one of the techniques we can use to solve Diophantine equations, which this problem involves. So anyway, that's the solution to this problem. And that uh, concludes my, my video for tonight. Thank you for watching. Long live math. And I'll see you guys next time.